Look at the share price of a company called India Globalization Capital. Uh, it's soaring. It's a cannabis pharmaceutical company, and they're getting into pot-infused drinks. Bring in John Carter, Simpler Trading CEO. John, welcome to the show. Stuart, thanks for having me here. So, um, you, you, you watch these cannabis stocks, don't you? You're a, an observer of the pot scene, so to speak, from <laughs> well, the outside, so to speak. Typically from the outside, one of the things, you know, and after, and that was a great rant, by the way, and one of the things <laughs> that I think is that if the American media actually drank more CBD-infused <laughs> beverages, they might chill out a little bit. You mean I should, I should do this? No, yeah, yeah, it'd be great. It'd be a good thing. And then, uh, you know, just everybody can, everybody can relax and relax about the New York Times pieces and things like that. So what's with this global, what's it called, global, I can't See, see again. What's, it, what's the name of that stock again? Put it up on the screen again, will you? Oh, the uh, global growth? Yeah, what's that all about? So what's interesting here is in, now in Canada, they've recently been allowed or given approval to start exporting cannabis to the U.S. starting October 17th. So some of these... Yeah. So some of these companies that are in Canada, they actually have already had huge investments by large companies. So that kind of gives them a vote of confidence. It's not like some guy in a garage that yep. decided to list his stock. So it's a way to participate in what's, in truth, a speculative portion of the market in companies that what I would call real companies. Okay. I'm told that there's enormous numbers of people who are betting against the cannabis stocks. They short them. That's, that's the way they look at it. You're short sure. them. You're expecting them to go down. You're betting that they go down. Is that accurate? It is. And what's interesting with this is you get the large hedge funds, which normally the idea is that you hear hedge funds and it's like, oh my gosh, these guys must know what they're doing. And what happens is when they short a stock, so they have a lot of shares betting that the yep. stock's going to go down, right? Well, if they're wrong, it turns into a squeeze. And that's why we're seeing actually some of these stocks rally so much because not only do you have new buyers come in and say, you know what, I want to get a piece of this market and buy it as an investment, but you also have these hedge funds who are short going, oh my gosh, we're wrong, and they're trying to get out just fast. I mean, faster than Bill Cosby being ex you know, <laughs> going to prison kind okay. of thing. Is there such a thing as um, an ETF or a cannabis mutual fund which brings together all the pot stocks or a lot of pot stocks so you don't put all your money into one basket, but you spread it around a bit? There, so there are some new ones coming online. The, the thing that right now is it's been a new enough industry where it's been more focused on individual stocks. And so part of it is a little bit of a buyer beware and making sure there's a little bit of due diligence and understanding like, okay, does this company really have revenues and all of that different stuff. Um, there are some larger companies. Uh, GWPH is a large company that not only do they do uh, different med medicinal uh, items, but they also have uh, CBD infused um, medicines as well. And so that's the way where it's like, wow, here's a proven company. It's been around for a while uh, instead of getting into the more speculative stuff. Do you think that, say, five years from now, marijuana will be a profitable, nationwide, multi-billion dollar industry? So absolutely. So what's interesting is I have a, a friend of mine that he's in business and he used to own a trophy company. And every time I saw him, he was tired, he was harried, he hated his work. So then he got out of that business and opened up a chain of three uh, cannabis type stores in Seattle. Um, not only is he making money hand over fist, the guy's happier than I've ever seen him in his life. Now, I don't know if it's because he's sampling the product all day, but um, in addition to that, though, it's the city is happy because there's a 30% tax coming in. So everybody wins. And so I, I think it's one of those things as we're seeing states roll this out, and, and I'm in Texas where now you're starting to see that, you know, some, some kind of chinks in the armor in terms of at least allowing it in there. But once the state governments understand how much money they can make with it, you know, once they understand it's a safer alternative to alcohol and it also helps with pain medication in addition to people who just want to relax a little bit, mm. it is a growth vehicle. Okay, you're pro-pot, I can tell. Pro-pot. <laughs> All right, well, okay, be careful. Uh, John, <laughs> thanks for joining us. We sure. appreciate that. Yeah, thanks for having me here. All right. Big hour